Hey guys, what's going on? It's Bosk of the Bosk One YouTube channel, and today I'm here to talk to you about the Trezor Hardware Cryptocurrency Wallet. So let's begin. Initially, it comes in this box. It's going to be shrink wrapped, and then it's also going to have this very, very sticky tape. Let me show you. If you look closely, you're going to see that it has the security seals. That's only going to be on the top and the bottom. Again, this box is already opened, but let's try to open this box. It's taped. It's very, like you're going to destroy the box opening it. No way around it. Um, it's a nice box. It's a shame you have to shred it when you get it, but that's the way it goes. You'll also notice that the treasure is going to be integrated. Nice little foam cutout packed here. Nice and secure in the box. You're just going to see a USB right there and a little lanyard type device as well as a couple things such as a quick setup guide and a little piece of paper to write down your recovery seed. Alright guys, so step one, you're going to head to Trezor.io, you're going to click over and navigate to Wallet. The Trezor Wallet's going to start. I already clicked install the Chrome application, you're just going to click right there and install the Chrome extension. And then you're going to go over here and plug your Trezor in. So you notice you'll get this prompt to install the firmware. For security reasons, Trezor is shipped without firmware installed. That's cool. That makes sense. I like that. All about security that's kind of why you spent the extra money on a hardware wallet as opposed to a paper wallet so let's utilize those benefits you're gonna see we're gonna get this option right here install new firmware yes sir erasing that's good now you're prompted with a fingerprint fingerprint that looks good new firmware successfully installed you may now unplug your dresser please reconnect the device all right I can do that Let's set up a name for it. I'm gonna call it uh Ooh, this is good. How about the Bosque Vault? Yeah, I like that. Now we're gonna need a pin. This is one of the coolest features. As you can see here, the pin is randomized. It's not one, two, three, four, five, six. It's two, six, nine, seven, four, three. And again, these are gonna change. So I'm gonna go ahead and input the pin number that I simply want. Now once you input that. You're going to see that it flips to a new set of scrambled numbers and put your same pin again. Now, if you're wondering, you're inputting the same numbers, not the same areas. So if your pin was 1, 2, 3, 4, you want to input 1, 2, 3, 4. So now you'll be prompted to write down your 24-word recovery seed. The first word in mine is puppy. And after this, I'm going to keep clicking these buttons and it's going to prompt me each word, next word, next word, next word, next word. You're going to write down your full recovery seed and you're going to get to go through it one more time to double check that you have the same recovery seed. The recovery seed is so vital. Do not share with anyone. Do not keep it online, on your computer, or anything like that because that kind of defeats the purpose of an off-the-grid cold storage hardware wallet. All right, so now we've uh, written down the seed there and I need to enter my PIN. As you can see, it's prompting me with a new grid layout. It's going to do this every time. So now I've entered my PIN. And we are going to finally get access to the wallet. As you can see, in brief seconds, it's success and loaded and ready for use. I have no transactions yet. Obviously, it gives us a couple options. One feature that's pretty cool is the fact that it's already implemented my name onto the Trezor like that. I mean, a little customization like that is actually really cool. And when I was doing a research before I actually picked up the treasure, I learned that you can replace this image with your own. So let's get to the important stuff and let's do that real quick right now because that sounds fun. All right, so we're going to just click over here to home screen. We get a lot of options here. You can see the just basic home screen with the Trezor logo, which is really just like a lock and key or I guess a padlock with your name implemented below there. That's pretty cool. All these other options. Get a little abstract, a little weird, kind of like it. I don't know why there's a mushroom here, but I like it. All right, so I tried to upload my image and it's not working. So let's click over here and see if uh, this will work. All right, so I just kind of zoomed in, centered it. Seems uh, good to me. Let's try it out and see if it works. But we need our pin code. All right, pin code has been uh, clicked. Confirm. Do you really want to change the home screen? I'm not sure why we have so much security for changing the home screen, but yes. All right, so I click back over here. I'm going to invert it with fixed shading and see how that turns out. 
So let's talk about wallets and coins. The Trezor can store Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Dash, Litecoin, Zcash, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, and all ERC20 tokens. That's the cool part. So start with the big, bad, OG Bitcoin. So we're going to click over here to account number one under Bitcoin. We're going to click receive. This is our receiving address here. All right, so now I'm logged into Exodus. And let's click over here to Mr. Bitcoin. We're going to put our address in here. And let's just go, uh, we're going to go max, max Bitcoin. That's where we're going to be at 139.42 with a fee of $2.66. It's kind of a high network fee, Bitcoin. Hope that's the right address because I didn't really double check. Whew, that was fast. So as you can see, 0 0.029 Bitcoin is already showing up. Let's click over here to our transactions, see our balance, our rate of current Bitcoin rate, which is ridiculous. That's going back up again. It was 4,000 like just a couple days ago. But whatever, for the more income expense, sweet. So we get this cool little graph and you know that goes on with time. Very nice. So this is unconfirmed. Let's check out the details, what it brings us. Looks like we have a Trezor Blockchain Explorer. I like it all integrated, all self-contained. If we want to send it, you know, we could just come in here. We could grab this Bitcoin address, paste it right there. We could send one Bitcoin, which is the equivalent of that rate. It's cool. You can get a currency drop-down menu. We can change the uh, fee we're sending it with. And again, click send, and it's really just that simple. All right, so let's click over to Dash. Let's see, it loads for a second, pretty fast. And we are going to go ahead and go receive. So this is going to be my Dash address. It automatically copies it when you click on it, and you also get the QR code right there. So let's go over here to Exodus. We're going to go send. We're going to use this Dash address, and let's send our max. So we're sending almost over 10 times the amount of Bitcoin we just sent for like half the fee. I'm just throwing that out there, guys. Just, just throwing it out there. Would be a similar case if we're using Litecoin too. Just throwing it out there, guys. That's a lot. Let's uh, do a test of 0 0.06. So while we're waiting for this transaction to show up on the blockchain and ensure everything's functioning properly, let's look at this. Fresh address. So very nice. We can also click here and do more addresses. So we can get an additional address and I imagine we can just go on and on and on with that to acquire as many addresses as we essentially want. You can also show on Trezor to make sure you're not, you don't have any kind of virus, malware, malicious hack, or anything like that. So as you can see here, the address is the exact same address shown on the Trezor as you see on your computer, verifying its legitimacy. So additionally, you can click over here. You can do a send. You know, I could come in here. I could take this uh, Exodus address plop it right there. I can put one dash and um, we can also click that button to set, send a max amount and then boom. We can also looks like just kind of run a couple of transactions at once. That's a pretty cool function. Kind of speeds you up if you're doing some kind of automated payout or you know whatever you're doing. A lot of options. So this is very cool. You can see that the transactions showing up here right there. You want to receive more you come over here. So you can see over here, this is a brand new fresh address. This allows you to basically stay off the grid, super secure, super anonymous. However, if you want to use that address again and also just remind yourself that it's not gone or lost, it's right there. So I'm going to go ahead and use that address again. I'm going to come over here to this dash and I'm going to go ahead and uh, send my max there. And we are going to be good to go. Hopefully, if it doesn't get lost, click. And that transaction is now being sent to my Trezor. Why am I doing this? Because I'm moving my funds to an off-grid secure location. Again, I love Exodus. It's, as far as I'm concerned, the best in the business in its app category, which is, you know, client-side wallet. Some people, you know, say a hot wallet. It's connected to the internet constantly. Very nice interface. Best background in the business right there. Come on, that looks look like Tails. 
Look at that. It's my future pup. I'm going to get some more Shiba. Stay tuned. So that transaction is in route on the way. So we'll come back to that in a second. But let's click over here to Zek, a.k.a. Zcash. No transactions yet. Here is going to be our Zcash address. So I'm going to come over here to Jax, which I'm not a very big fan of Jax. But you can see I've got some Zek sitting here. And I'm going to take the address that I just had. I'm going to just double verify it. T1YJSH. Last ones are Raz A Y. So that looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and input my max Zek right there. Just like that, my Zek is off to this wallet. Again, while we wait for that, we're going to click over to send. Same exact setup as Dash. You'll see that we have the function to input your address, the amount you want. Click this for max and also create a custom potentially fee as well as multiple address options. Again, you know, more options here to create more and more unique addresses. So while we wait for the Zcash to show up, let's check on our Dash. And sure enough, here is our Dash. That's exciting. I like it. One thing I will say, though, if you look at this, this is our setup here for our Dash wallet. And we click over here to Bitcoin. Tell me the difference here. Much nicer account. It would be kind of nice to see these features added to the other ones. So, boom, our Zek is now already loaded into our Trezor. And we click over here. Again, verified on the blockchain. It's unconfirmed currently, but surely enough, it'll be in route. Now let's go over to Ethereum. I would like to see a client-side based Ethereum setup, but, you know, whatever. We'll see what happens. So we're going to connect over to a Trezor on the uh, Ethereum side. We're going to import account number one. This is going to be our address. Let's go ahead and unlock this wallet. I'm going to click over here to my Ethereum wallet. Put that address in. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed and put 0.015 ETH in here. Send it to that address. This comes out to $4.43. Now, when you access it, it brings you straight to the Send Ether and Tokens page. Here's my address. You can display it on the Trezor to double verify it, which, again, very, very cool feature. Click over here to Wallet Info. It's going to make us access it in that same fashion again with the Trezor. Going to export. Boom. And you can already see that it's loaded in there, which is very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and send the majority of my Ethereum over there. So what about token balances? ERC20 tokens, basically all the Ethereum-based tokens. How do we check that? We would just simply send it to this address and click over here to check the token balance. I went ahead and just sent 10 Civic over there to that same address. As you can see right there. Same address, Wix98. So I'm going to click over to Token Balances and see if it's updated on the blockchain. It's very likely that it is not, but oh, that was pretty fast. And sure enough, here we go, and here's our token balance. So if you want to send tokens, you're just going to come this way over here, log in. And you're, again, you're exporting your public key. That's not your private key. So I'm going to click to this, and it's going to bring me right in here. And you can see here's my address, my balance. So if I wanted to send some Ethereum back to this address, I'd click this, I'd click this, and I'd put one in or whatever I want to send. And then I would just go ahead and click that, and it would generate the transaction, and it would be dispatched through my Ether wallet, drawing from my public key, which is secured by my private key, which is what allows no one else to access my funds. And then it would be sent to the destination you desire. So if you want to send your tokens, you're going to need to load your token balances. So I've loaded my token balances, which is 10 Civic. You can show all the tokens here. As you can see, a lot of tokens are possible. And from there, that's where we're going to be able to use this drop-down menu to send Civic. So if I wanted to send 10 Civic back to my old Civic address, I would take this, which is the same Ethereum address. You can see this is that. And you go over here to Civic. Again, D70, same address. I could put in 10 there and send that 
And just like that, you're sending all your coins you have. All right, guys, that's going to conclude this uh, screen capture tutorial portion, showing you how to send and receive Bitcoin Dash Zcash. Really applies to all of them, as well as Ethereum and ERC20 tokens slash Ethereum tokens, in addition to the initial setup of the device. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's my initial setup and use on the Trezor wallet, showing you guys how to do the initial setup, as well as change your home screen, which, again, isn't a big deal but i think it's pretty cool along with receiving and sending bitcoin ethereum slash all erc20 slash ethereum tokens dash and zcash and again the process would be the same for litecoin and bitcoin cash hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please make sure to subscribe to the boss coin youtube channel and i'll see you next time you guys thought i forgot tails again i, I did she was in the room the whole time i shot the video I forgot her again.